Have you ever wondered how to reduce the effects of aging? Well, the secret might be peptides. Hi, I'm Dr. Carr with Modern Body Clinic. In today's video, we're going to talk about anti-aging and a specific class of uh, proteins called peptides. What if I tell you the building blocks of youth are already inside you? Yes, peptides. If you don't know what peptides are, they are the small little proteins that are really involved in signaling in your body, telling different cells what to do. And there's literally thousands of them. And so peptides are involved in many different processes, but certainly there are some processes that involve aging. So we all know aging is inedible. It's going to happen, but how can we do it gracefully and maintain a high level of you know functionality or being youthful? Well, there's a few different, actually several, theories on why we age. And so what that means is that we don't know exactly why we age, but there are some things we know for sure. So one of those things that we know is that these small little organelles inside our cells called mitochondria, they are essentially responsible for energy production in our cells. If we didn't have mitochondria, we would not exist. So they are very important in living and provide the best amount of energy that the cell needs. And so it turns out these age as well. The mitochondria also get older. And so a couple of things happen. One is they are not as efficient as creating energy. Also, they decrease the number. So the amount of mitochondria in a cell go down as well as we age. We do need this energy to help maintain things. And so obviously, if we have less energy over time, then it is harder to maintain things. Another thing that we know is happening is DNA. So over time, DNA gets damaged and it's not as effective as it used to be. DNA is essentially responsible for creating protein. As we get older, the DNA is not as effective and we are not as efficient in creating certain proteins. One of those proteins, or a couple, are include last and collagen. These are proteins in the skin and really give the skin its suppleness. And so as we get older, those proteins are made less and what the result is, what we see is wrinkles and fine lines. So there is three peptides that I think are really great for anti-aging. That is epitalium, the second is CJC1295, and dimosin beta-4. Yeah, I don't know where to get these names from either. Now, epitalian is a peptide that was discovered in Russia at least a few decades ago. It is a uh, peptide that is created in your brain. And it's a few different things that we know it does. One of those things it does is help protect the DNA. So it turns out your DNA has these little caps on it called telomeres. What those do is really help protect the DNA. And as we get older, those telomeres or caps get shorter. And so you can imagine that if they're getting shorter, they can get into parts that are important. So that can make the proteins less effective or less of them. So what epitalium does is helps protect those caps. So there's an enzyme called telomerase, which acts on those caps there. And so with epitalium, what it can do is not only stop the caps from getting shorter, but actually get them longer. And so that is one way that it will help protect our aging. It does some other things, including help with free radicals, which damage the DNA as well. And they've done studies in animals on this. And animals who received epitalin had a 52% reduction in their mortality, which is insane. That is a very high number. So there's obvious benefit for there. The next peptide is called CJC1295. Again, I don't know where to get these, these names from either, but it is a peptide involved in creating growth hormone. And so as we age, different hormones get impacted and in general, hormone levels go down. And that includes growth hormone. Some people have called growth hormone the fountain of youth because it does so many positive things for our body. It helps protect muscle mass, it helps with metabolism, it even helps with maintaining a sharp brain. So what CJC1295 does is acts on the pituitary gland to create more growth hormone. Often we pair with another peptide called epimorlin. You can also use some more than there's, there's actually a whole bunch of them. And to really help maximize the benefit that we get from the CJC1295. And so over time, we will see our growth hormone levels go up. The, the last peptide is called thymosin beta-4. And so this is a peptide that is actually created in the thymus gland. The thymus gland is really important in 
helping develop our immune system and mature it. But guess what? It's not there forever. The thymus gland starts to essentially go away in our 40s. And so at some point you will not have a thymus gland anymore. So the thymus invader 4 really helps optimize the immune system and helps when there's some type of soft tissue damage. Some people have even used thymus invader 4 for treating long COVID because uh, part of the issue there is the immune system not acting correctly. Obviously it's not FDA approved for that, but some people do use it for that, but that is another great peptide to help optimize things. So those are three of the best peptides I think there are for anti-aging. You know, if you want to use peptides, that is the foundational stack I would use if I was looking for anti-aging benefits. Now, how would you get started on something like this? Definitely you want to get with someone that knows a lot about peptides or certainly more than you. you want them to know more than you for sure. A great source would be the uh, International Peptide Society. They can refer you to a number of practitioners that are well-versed in peptides. Part of the reason you want to do that is one, is you want to match the goals, what you're trying to do with a particular peptide. But also you want to make sure it's safe. So you want to make sure there's no medical issues that would contraindicate a peptide. Probably one of the biggest ones would be cancer. There's a lot of different peptides you would not want to use if you had cancer or like CJC-1295, I would not recommend it if you had active cancer. Now, the other thing you want to talk to a practitioner about is the dosing and the frequency because these three peptides I just mentioned are actually ones that you would not use every day or even all the time. So the epitalian is something that you would use somewhere between 10 to 20 days and even that is every third day on the dosing and you would do it at max every six months. The CJC-1295 is something you would use a little more regular, but even that is a duration of three to four months and then you will cycle off. And the Thymus Invader 4, same idea, is something you would do three, four, up to six weeks based on what issues that you're addressing. And again, that's something you would do every four to six months. Again, not all the time. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have, please subscribe so you can see other content like this. Otherwise, check out this video on MOTC. It's another peptide that is often used for weight loss and performance. Bye for now.